You're going to remember this every day for the rest of your life. If you want to get to a goal, if you want to get to your dream, you've got to focus on all the little steps. You have to put in your time. You have to be patient and you have to enjoy the process. Whatever you're doing now, whatever you want to be great at, whatever you want to be special at, I'm sure you, you may be already be good at it, but to be extraordinary, you have to do extra. I firmly believe that we are all here for a very specific reason, to do something truly extraordinary. But what are you going to do to get there? Shadows grow so long before my eyes and the moving across the pace suddenly the day turns into night far away from the city well don't hesitate cause you're Very happy and excited <laughs> to sit down with Mrs. Elena Rose, who is a superstar, soon to be big star. She's already a big star, to be quite honest, but she's a songwriter. She's an artist. She's a vocalist. She does all things. She's an extremely talented young lady. I'm also very fortunate to work with her at Anatomy, the best gym in the world She's a hardworking young person, and I wanted to get her on here to hear her story. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. How'd I do? You were great. Okay. That was dope. Awesome. Awesome. So I wanted to have you on because I get to spend a lot of time with you in training, and we could talk about that later. But first, I actually want to hear your story, and you tell everyone listening, the Magna Method listeners, how you came up and how you found your place in your space, in your industry, and began writing and, and doing what you're doing today so please well thank you for having me first yeah, of all i love you so much you know that um it's it's a long story i'll make it short um, you don't have to make it short i got here five years and a half ago it's mm -hmm. about to be six years i was 19 years old mm -hmm. with my um, middle sister she was 16 we opened up a map the florida map in my house in venezuela and we literally said, wherever my finger lands, Seriously? we're going to move. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. My country was going through horrible, horrible politics situation. You know, um, the whole Maduro regimen. It was very scary to live there. I was studying journalism and we were being attacked daily. Yeah, like it, it was scary. Like our lives were literally on a thread. And... Um, so we did that. I, I was working. I was making my own money, and I had saved up a little bit. And I was um, what were you doing young. For work? I was singing. Okay. I was singing in, in private events oh, and cool. bars and. Oh cool. Yeah, and for some reason, five years ago in my country, musicians made more money than surgeons, so we were making money. <laughs> um, and I didn't pay rent or anything like that, so I had saved something, and, and I told my sister, yeah, let's go. I was young, and I don't know if irresponsible, but I was just fearless in that moment, I guess. And um, we moved here. My finger landed in Hollywood. Oh, really? That was yeah, first? That was first. That's okay. where I first moved. Um, I worked there. I used to bar, tend, well, it's not bar, tend, serve. Mm -hmm. Server, like a yeah, server, yeah. At Hard Rock Cafe, mm -hmm. my sister used to clean at a Bath and Body Works, um, and I always, my sister is really part of my story, okay, because it's course, you know she she was there with me, and today she's so successful, and 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 she's just so inspiring for me that I can't leave her out. Of course, of um, course. Shout out to Rose, love you. Um, so. I was doing that. It was very tough in that moment. My family stayed back home and my family wasn't um, 
I don't want to say supportive, but they were scared with the decision that we had made. Mm-hmm. We were young, and we were here by ourselves, basically. Right. So my my family was like, okay, if you guys go, then you guys better do your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. Um, so that's that's what we did. We were basically it was basically just her and me um, working and. I then had to leave Hard Rock Cafe because it was just a scary place to be around, you know. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. that life is it's working with drunk people sucks, bro. It's it's <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It yeah. sucks exactly. Unless your drink for drink it's it's it can certainly be challenging. Yeah. Challenging. Yeah. So I how long was, ago? How long ago was that? That was five years and a half okay. ago. Okay. That's when I got here. I was there for a couple of months, and then I was riding my bike one day, and I saw a crystal shop. And oh boy! Yep, and that's when I became a crystal therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she yeah. was like, I was like, look, Steph, I'm looking for a job. So she owned the store. It's a family business. I'm like, I'll do whatever, Mark. I would paint the walls. I would I was studying because to be there you had to be a crystal therapist because right. you were studying crystals and right, I didn't right. know nothing about them so I was studying about the stones and like different religions or whatever because it's a store that's a universal like mm-hmm. they sell everything and I was like moving boxes and like pra- like it, it it was dope I I was literally the handyman because I'm also like big and strong mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was just I, I I remember I painted the whole parking lot oh, yeah it we, was, we have work for you to do at Anatomy here we do I know I know, help I know. Charles, I got Charles out <laughs> Yeah. Was so cute um and and it was the first time that I felt comf- like I had a monthly check and that was so big for me because before that it was like kind of like you know under the table yeah. like my sister was all, she stayed at that store in Hollywood Sterling Road two years later she became the manager of the mm-hmm. store so she was like building her career inside the store which is great yeah, right. That's cool. um, I started singing in bars Steph my boss she was very supportive of my job Mm-hmm. I would work in the mornings and then at night I would just go drive around Miami. I had a 2002 Mitsubishi. Yeah. It was a, I, I think I paid $2000 for it. Mm-hmm. It was a descapotable, how do you say it? Uh convertible. Convertible? Nice. But it was a it wasn't Ooh, you couldn't go, I, couldn't go up and down. No, it was it was it cloth. Was, yeah, cloth up top. Yeah. yeah. So first, like the first three weeks, super dope. First time it rained, my whole car was filled with water, oh. and it stayed that till I sold the car. Because every time it would rain and I didn't know how to fix it, I would freaking even put gum on it, like. <laughs> to the little oh hole so i used to sing at senior frogs in south beach oh yeah yeah on uh, washington or collins 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 yeah dude they would pay me like 80 dollars to sing for like five hours it was crazy it's good money right there it, good money <laughs> when you need it right yeah, 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 yeah. wednesday to sunday um and i remember when i would when i would get there the valet the valet dudes in the parking they would like point out the parking lot for me to park my car not them because oh, yeah. it was like it yeah. smelled horrible oh, and i had like little uh, like tobitos to like put yeah. out the water and stuff oh, um so i started singing at bars i went through that um to that through that band first and i'm and i'm painting it painting it as beautiful as I can because now that's how I see it and I always tell this to people like it's so cool to just remember you remember the hard work but just also see it as it was a plan it was part of the plan you know what I'm saying you don't know it when you're going through it exactly when you're going through it it was a nightmare but also I was just so focused and 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 just walking and walking and walking and, and, and singing and singing and that was just it for me that I didn't re- realize that I was very exposed many times to drugs and oh, I'm sure. different environments that were very, very dangerous for a minor in the United States. Oh, I was yeah. still singing in places that 
it was illegal up till now. You know, I wasn't mm. 21 and I was singing mm. in basically every casino, every single bar in Miami. And I didn't look 19, but I was. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of things in that moment that I didn't understand and that I had never seen. I had never seen someone like put anything up their nose and I was yeah. like, oh, wait, what's that? Yeah. And, and then have working with people in different bands that would be like, literally, I remember going to stage and them giving me like, okay, these are your pills. This is like what you, like, this is your uh, ticket for your shot, da, 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 da. Cause they would want women to be like, you know. Loose. Yeah. Um, and to look ticket like that for, on Oh, stage. ticket for your drink. Okay, yeah. drink shot. shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I remember the first time that happened to me, going to the bathroom, calling my mom, crying. Because my mom was the person that was like, I don't want you to go, I'm not going to support right, you. Right. But then she was always there, yeah, to yeah, be honest. Course, you know course, what I'm saying? The only one. Um, and I remember having a friend from the band being like, you don't belong here. You don't. But I'm going to teach you how to do this. You throw everything away and you just act like you're yeah, high and drunk. yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's get it. So yeah, that's, yeah. you know, nice it, 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 yes, that really made my skin thick in very different moments. Um, I started learning how the business of being a live entertainer, singer in Miami works. That took me a couple of years. Yeah. But then I, I started just hanging out and playing with the best musicians in the world, bro. Because Miami is called the cemetery of musicians, but that's because when you tour, you're obviously like everywhere, yeah. but then there's always a moment that you stop the tour and usually all the musicians stop it here because it's where the artists live really are. Okay. Yeah. So when they're not touring, they're gigging around, you know, mm. and, and bars and mm -hmm. events, whatever. So I was literally playing with the best musicians I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Like that would play with Ricky Martin, J Lo, um, just huge people that I admire and and I was just listening to them. I mm -hmm. love being around people that I feel know more than me. Mm -hmm. Me too. I hear you. It's yeah. it's so cool because I even though I was probably getting paid less than what I deserved or I was doing things that maybe a lot of people wouldn't, you know, understand why I was making myself go through that. I, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. I was genuinely happy. Mm -hmm. And I was learning and learning and learning. Um, I set myself goals of places where I wanted to play. And, and I started just like scratching that list. I remember saying the last play at the last place I was going to play was going to be at Faena. And it oh, was. Yeah. The last place I played before I became an artist or a writer was at Faena. Mm -hmm. It was my last show. Um, I think putting that en energy out in the universe as well really helped me. Mm -hmm. I was in parallel because I was working in the crystal shop, working on my spiritual side, which, right. you know, people always ask me if I would die without music. I think I would die without my spiritual side. I love my connection with, with God and, and my guides and just the source. And saying that, I mean, I was very focused on the responsibility that I have with my purpose because I know I'm not here with everything I've gone through, I'm, there has to be a plan for me, bro. Cause oh, yeah. You know, like they keep putting me around people that are just so special and they're angels in my life like you. And you know that I've told you many times. If I'm, you're in trouble if I'm the angel. Yeah, and yeah. I'm emotional so we don't get to that point yeah, yet. Yeah. But back to the story, I am singing in a bar one day and this is so crazy because I had a witch once tell me with some cards she's like there's a famous producer that's gonna see you singing at a bar and he's gonna want to sign you and your life is gonna change forever and i was like okay great thank you now when you hear that are you like that's bs you want to believe in it obviously i just hear it but mm -hmm. it doesn't change it doesn't you know it's like okay, okay cool thank you i appreciate it um it, it happened exactly like that. I was singing at a bar. I had a really famous producer look at me and be like, who are you? What's up with you? I'm like, hey, bro, nice to meet you. Um, at that mo in that moment of my life, I needed money. I needed to pay my rent. That mm -hmm. was it. I was mm -hmm. living at, a, at an office in Dura 
it was literally an office that I, when I got to the um, apartment rent office, mm-hmm. whatever, in the complex, right. I said to the lady, I need somewhere to live. I don't have any money please help me she's like i see you sing all the time at this place oh, wow. you're amazing oh it's super da, nice da, da, da. i want to support you i'm like oh my god please i swear i will pay you but i need somewhere to crash and she let me live she rented me an office mm-hmm. literally and i always say this story it's so cool the only thing i would see it was my bed the a little microwave that I had in the door and on top I had the exit sign Mm -hmm. and I drew a little O next to the exit in Spanish it means success exito success so I would see that every day just like in red um it was super dope but that was my life so when I see this person look at me and I'm like draws attention to me i was not thinking about nothing else but like how can i make money with right, this right. you know what i'm saying right. how can i help you so you can help me right so i started recording every single demo that came in to his label for sony music mm-hmm. a demo is when you're gonna pitch a song for an artist if it's for a girl usually you need a girl to sing it so yeah. you sell it better so i was recording mark every single song so now my life was working in the morning singing at night going at 1 a.m to the studio to like four or five recording everything 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 when i saw the possibilities of what that world was because i love writing i was like don't pay me but let me be in the studio because now i want to see what you do right he was like how am i not going to pay you i was like bro don't pay me i just want to learn and you were spending all your time in there? After working, yeah. So then it was like, okay, I, this is taking me somewhere else. And then it went through, it went from singing demos to starting to write to then Sony call me out and be like, okay, Elena, everybody's talking about you, what's up? Um, and then that's how my career started. I wrote a song for Becky G called Dollar. That was the first song that... Uh, How do you write a song for Becky G, though? How does that start? How is that Because then I was in, in, in Sony. You were in, but you're in there, you don't pay me, you're spending time around there, and how are they going, hey, you can write a song for Becky G, or do you write it and then you say, hey, I have a song for her? How did, yeah. you, how did it happen? It, was, it, was, it went from singing demos to writing songs in within that, those same plate like if I'm already in the studio and I'm recording the demo and they're talking about ideas and I go like well maybe it could be this and then be like huh yeah that makes sense Patrick you should invite Elena for the next session so she can write too okay so that's how it kind of like understood. building into understood. that um so then I was in the splits of the songs so then the A&Rs and Sony are like oh wait she writes too what's up with her bring her to the office right so I pitched my artist project first at Sony. They were like, cool, but you actually write and there's no writers, producer girls. So that's, I think they were more interested in that. We have an artist coming in, Becky G, we want to invite you to the session. I remember driving that day, my aunt was, was very sick and my family is all out. So she was visiting and she only had me basically. At that moment, I was living... Okay, crazy story that I forgot. Mm -hmm. When I was living in that office and the hurricane... I think it wasn't the last one, the one before that. 2007, 2007? No, 2007 is way back. Is it? Like two, three years ago. Okay, I I remember, I remember. Yeah. I left to my grandparents' house, which I never touched. My my family always had a huge house here in Pompano Beach, but I was just like off you know i want to do this on my yeah, own i yeah, was living in a get- like hollywood yeah. was ghetto every time i would get there at night someone was going to jail there was always a cop like <laughs> someone <laughs> house. it was horrible it was horrible and, and it, in that moment i had to admit it i used to smoke weed and i was always like please let it not be thomas my dealer and everybody i was like is it tommy no it's not Tommy. i was like cool guys good night take care and we just go <laughs> Don't do drugs. I don't do it anymore. It sucks. It fucks up your life. Sorry. That's okay. That we'll get into that. We'll get so into good. that. So I tell my grandparents, guys, obviously this is going to 
like this is scary they're asking us to like evacuate can i stay at your house mm -hmm. my uncle goes of course you can actually stay at mine so i stay with my uncle i come back two weeks later to my apartment and a mold had grown in the air conditioner yeah yeah in the ac yeah my whole apartment with everything that i owned since i got covered here, in mold yeah covered in mold, even my mattress oh I remember, dude, and this is why I always say this, God, man, if you have a relationship with God and you feel in your gut that he's with you, nothing, they can take everything away from you and nothing feels like you need it. Nothing feels like you need it. I literally had my cat in her little crate, whatever. I opened my apartment. I smelt it. I was like, close the door. I'm starting my life again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm starting my life again. I pick up the phone and I call my grandfather and I was like, okay, I haven't called you in four years. I need you. I lost everything right now, bro. Can I stay at your house? So I was staying at his house. I did for my, the last year before I got signed mm -hmm. on Sony TV. He was like, of course, mommy. I've been waiting for this for like four years. Da, 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 whatever. Why weren't you in contact with him? You just I like was, but I wasn't asking for him. All right, understood. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And, and they were all just looking at us like, oh, okay, they're actually, at, the, at first, they're like, they're crazy, they're crazy, they're crazy. Oh, oh, they're actually, okay. Doing they're something, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Of course. Um, so, which by the way, at this point, my sister is getting a 100% full scholarship at FYU. Wow. She studied her whole career. She's a veterinarian today. That's without awesome. Without paying one cent. Wow. She is Good a for genius. Her. And now awesome. she's at an Ivy League also with a scholarship wow so that's why i say that's she's awesome. part of my story because she made it she's in school now yeah uh, okay masters yeah that's awesome she's a vet she's amazing but um so i get there and okay fast forward it's a becky g session day everybody's super excited but my aunt is sick and i'm like that's that's yeah. immediate for me. Yeah, yeah. I called up Rafa. I'm like, yo, my aunt needs me. I'm not going to the session. I'm literally driving the turnpike. Like, I'm not, I'm just not going. Driving to Papa the Beach. He goes, who do you think you are? <laughs> literally one of my coworkers. Um, are you crazy? This is Becky G. Like, you've been working for a whole year. Yeah. And these were my two friends that they would go see me at my gigs when I was playing because mm -hmm. they used to Uber. So they used to wait for their next rides on my shows. We used to dream together. Like today, they're also very successful writers, producers. And, awesome. and I was always like, what are you guys going to do with your first check? It's hilarious because when we got it, we didn't want to spend anything. Mm -hmm. But we would always dream with that. Uh, so he's like, are you crazy? Um, no, you have to. Like, we're, we're working with gringos today. I'm like, well, my aunt is sick. He's like, uh turn around you have to come to the session thank god i did because my life changed after that turn around um we did the session it was great one of the writers that that was there which was the gringo nate my brother now i love him uh he calls up becky g's manager and he's mm -hmm. like you have to fly out here this girl i don't know what she is where she came from but we need her in our team oh, that's cool. he's also signed to my manager my manager hits me up. He, he's like, uh, can I go see you at a show? The whole time till he signed me, mm -hmm. which was like three, four, five months after that, mm -hmm. he was like not giving me a sign that he wanted to sign me. But he's a very well-known manager okay. in the industry. And, and this is so funny. Back to the witch... She goes, this is the person you're going to see. Like, it's a card and I keep it because mm -hmm. he doesn't believe in this thing so much. Mm -hmm. But it's literally like a knight in, in, on top of a horse. And it's, dude, it's him. And we make fun of it all the time because he's like, this is the person. And he's going to help you, like, heal so many things. Because, you know, I've never... Uh, with men for me has always been very hard to create a relationship because I didn't really have my dad you mm -hmm. know how you normally have a father mm -hmm. and um, he's like he's gonna help you you know heal like even like the relationship with your dad is gonna teach you and, and it's right like he's been the first man 
that has ever like respected me like that in my life and and that's amazing so and believed in me too man because everybody was like talking and talking but he was the first person that was like no actually you have a really really good potential and i believe in you as an artist it's amazing well. what a blessing huge right. blessing so i opened up my label with him he's my partner um it's called guerrera de la luz warrior of the light um i started putting more music out like one thing led to another mm -hmm. um i signed now a female producer so i'm building my my little woman's um group mm -hmm. in the industry and i just want to change it man that's that's basically my story i I stayed away from everything that was making my life toxic. I understood, you know, which led me to you. <laughs> New chapter of my life. Uh, I was, obviously, this whole time, I was just focused on working and making money in my life. My day consisted of Red Bulls and cigarettes, and that was it. I would eat probably once a day, but no sleeping no nothing and I, and I felt good to be honest i didn't like i was just focused on something else. well you're riding a high and you're chasing something when you have a target you don't really stop to ask questions or, or acknowledge the bad you're like right. let's go and then you don't and then you don't you notice it crash yeah. With, oh yeah and then i see myself in this horrible horrible scary depression where i have everything now money whatever success means to someone whatever fame means to someone and i hate it and my mom is like wait what's going on mm -hmm. and it was definitely that you know i wasn't getting the right nutrition i wasn't giving back to my body everything that was giving to me right so jessica goes i want to I want to, she literally flew out to Miami because everyone was freaking out with my depression. Um, and I am very loving and, I'm, and I am very sweet, but I'm usually there for you, not talking about me in that aspect. So I was being very close with what was mm -hmm. happening and my mom called my manager like, yo, she hasn't uh, had anything to eat in four days and she's not leaving her room. And she, you know, and it was just, I was watching uh, Amy Winehouse um, Netflix documentary, so I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh my God. Good when you're there, it's scary. Pushing yourself into a hole. Pushing myself into a hole. Like, why? What is it? What is this? And then, but also made me realize, like, you have all of these things, and the only thing that's really important is your mental health, bro. Like, that's real happiness. That's yeah. real, and that's what gives you clarity to keep doing everything yeah. Yeah. that you want to do. So she goes, I want to take you to this. Um, he's an amazing trainer. He's so this and this and this. Da, 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 da. And I go, oh, I hate it. I don't want to go. <laughs> She's like, hey, I swear, Elena, come on, I'm taking you. I was, the first day I met you, I was definitely here, not because I wanted to. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could tell. And then I sit down and, you know, everywhere I go, usually people talk about, like, what I do more than who I am. And I get it and I appreciate it. But literally the first thing that you asked me was, all right, tell me about you. And I go, oh shit, okay, <laughs> okay. We're like, how is your relationship with your da 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 and da da da, like personal, deep, that literally made me realize in that moment that what was happening with me was in my head and, and, and my traumas and, and, and my past and everything I had gone through that I hadn't stopped and realized that I put myself in situations, like I said before, that had potentially traumatized me as yeah. well. Yeah. you know and, and it's like my skin like my my soul was like i had scratched it to get to where i wanted to be and now it was time to close that so i yeah. could be a better version of myself right you made me realize like that in that moment and i was like okay i need therapy i need all this i need nutrition health da, da, da. so i left yeah. and And that was the day, man. I, that was the day that I decided I wanted something different and everything started. And it's, I, I think I really struggled in the beginning and, and mm. you saw me. Because I was, 
I'm so used to seeing automatic instant gratification. Instant gratification. I'm used to it because that's also how I program my brain yeah. with everything in my life. Like if I do this, I will get this for sure. And I was just in that law of attraction, mm. you know, right, right, right. which works. It works, but then real 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 like deep down things that you have to take from the root mm -hmm. actually takes a little bit longer and oh that's yeah what happened with us oh, yeah. we were working out for like three months and i didn't see anything yeah anything change and i was eating right and i was sleeping and i was you know and it was it was hard i, I i'm not a like give up person like oh, yeah. i'm gonna give up but yeah no, but I was just really frustrated and yeah. stressed. It's hard to keep your momentum and keep your enthusiasm when you don't see change. Right? It's and then, hard. you know what hurt me the most? And, and, and I, I remember I used to, it sucked. And my mom kind of pointed it out at a certain at a moment, too, because she was like, you're not doing this for Mark. You're doing this for you. Oh, yeah. Because I was, I was like, two if I go on the scale and Mark doesn't see that I've changed like it yeah. used to freak me out like I don't yeah. want him to feel that I'm not giving my 100% and my mom was like Elena he just wants you to be you know it's yeah. not for him so it was also that like mm -hmm. it was a lot yeah you you worked incredibly hard but you, you could tell at the beginning it's hard to create a habit around something that you don't enjoy and why would you I tell people all the time when they come to train or they're doing a, a transformation, you know, it's not as much uh, at the body. You know, we, we know it's the mind, but there's a shift that occurs in the mind when you realize, I don't have to go beast mode every day and go crazy and kill it. That's not real. Yeah. With you, it's you cut out smoking, you cut out Red Bulls, you started to eat real food, you started to move a little bit. Then all of a sudden, these changes started to happen, and you know, you 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 start to feel better. And then, yeah, maybe. I'm feeling alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, feel alive. Yeah. You said you I came. Agree. Remember what you said to me one day? You came in because, dude, before I was a walking what? Zombie. Yeah. I was a walking zombie. Yeah. And 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 my and my the world I have in my head because that's what keeps me alive my, my dreams mm -hmm. and my thoughts and my creativity and my mind that was very much alive but it was starting to shut down because everything outside of me was already done right. done like even my skin I just look like a dead body <laughs> do you see do you see like what changes what changes occurred more energy more yeah more energy what else more energy um well we also have the breathing exercises mm -hmm. that give yeah. me a yeah. lot of clarity that's right uh i sleep r good because i'm really tired mm -hmm. so i get home and i'm just like and i sleep and you weren't sleeping before at all not like very little how i am or right very little either. you're sleeping more because you're you're so active in your training and uh, it's like a deep sleep yeah more like that it's and you wake up sleep. feeling better, recovered. I wake up feeling like I want to be here. Mm -hmm. Like today I was in a, an incredibly, a lot of pain. Yeah. But also just seeing you, man. Like, I don't think I would be, I love anatomy. Anatomy is cool. Best gym in the world. Yeah, but you complex. make. I appreciate that. This, yeah. I you make that, that different. Like, just the way also that, that. Cause I could, I don't know if you like this with everyone, you know. I, 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 and I'm usually like this. I talk about someone the way they are with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's the way you see me, the way you push me in a way that's like. You you see something in me that you know that you also had to in a moment, in you push, and yeah. took you to, you know where you are now. Which yeah, and it's not about like. Yeah, the outside world, whatever success or anything, it's it's me and my soul and who I am and and, and my power and my strength and yeah. my mental like growth. So that that's just so inspiring. That that I just want to be here squatting thirty five times just to yeah. have you tell me something that I know I will take for the rest of the day. And I told you like, I'm exercising, but I see it more as soul growth and and i see it then like i'm in the studio writing a song and i'm stuck and i go reset reset you know and and, and 
those are very specific words that you use in, yeah. during my training that help my brain go back, start over, reset. And, yeah. and I take that in, into my life, and I think that's what yeah. it's I, so cool about it. I, I call it, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I, I think that the structure, just the clarity, but the organ organizing your thoughts and having a a, uh, a a system or an approach what i was going to say is if you have a system of organizing your thoughts and how when things don't go you said before I, I was used to a system mark of instant gratification and you program yourself if i do uh, if i do this work it equals this result but you have to program yourself to understand i one of the things that helps me tremendously and i've t i've shared it a million times but I was not a good athlete. I was told repeatedly how bad I was, and it bothered me. And it's not a story of hardship. It's a story of you must be better. Yeah. Like, it's good to be told you're not good enough so you can try to be better. You know, if you instantly get, hey, I do this, I get my reward, like, that's not helping you. It's not. You know what I mean? It's really not. And it's good to be good at things, but I'm saying... You have to learn how to deal with not adversity hurdles and being told no. And now you're, you're dealing with something physical where you're like, this is hard. Like, I really got to focus on this. And if I don't, I'm not going to do it focus. well. So in a studio, although you're super talented, writing, singing, whatever it is, when it starts to go negative and go south and it's not, you're not feeling it, you know how to like organize your thoughts and say, I got this. Dude, right. and I have to admit, it was after meeting you. Because then also after starting this whole life-changing process with you, all these bigger opportunities started showing up my door that I would mm -hmm. have not been able to really approach them correctly mm -hmm. before you. Because I was just in another headspace. I would have given up. I would have not seen like... And not giving up because of insecurities or fear, but just I wouldn't have seen the importance of going through it mm -hmm. and yeah. just doing it. Staying you know? the course. Staying in the course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So now that I've been, after you, you've seen it. Oh, you've yeah. seen it that I, every time I'm like, yo, you don't know what happened. Yeah. This is what, yeah. who I'm gonna be working with. This is what I'm gonna, gonna be doing next. It's been getting bigger and bigger because I am there and I'm just thinking, Dude, it's the and and then every like every rep, repetition counts, every single rep yeah. one more. If I already think that I finished, which is usually like that, yeah. twelve, yeah. you're like three more, and I'm like, Ugh, but I get it done. I usually think that I'm done with this producer that I've told you, and then he's like, I think we should tweak a couple more things, and I'm like, okay, three more reps, it's yeah. nothing, you know, like. For sure. It's Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's funny because no matter how seasoned you are, how much endurance you have, that doesn't matter as much as how you're going to deal with them saying, let's do a few more. Because it's frustrating and it's hard to have staying power, right? It's And that's what I think I am getting better at here every day. And the focus that I have, the focus like... It's like my brain is also a muscle and I am also like getting it stronger and stronger and, and tighter and cleaner and just, I feel so good, Mark. And no, I'm and so I, happy to I, hear that. And you know how grateful I am. And oh, I please. sometimes say it in a more deeper way than others, but I'm forever grateful. I appreciate that. You. Thank you for saying that, but it's a joy. This podcast is not for that, but I appreciate you saying that and, um, it's a joy working with you and it's a joy and going back to what you said like I do see a little bit of myself in everyone I work with and you see it's not like hey I'm going to train this person because they're famous like I had no idea who you were like I don't I don't know sorry but that's the truth yeah yeah you. right no but I'm <laughs> no but I mean that like at the same time I took on an actor who is very popular I really didn't know who he was. So I asked a few people. They knew exactly who he was. The point is I see, and I had a similar conversation with him the first day he came in because I knew that he had been dealing with certain issues or, or substance abuse issues. And 
I said, uh, you know, we, we're going to train, you know, five days a week. I said, is that going to be a problem for you? He said, no, no, no. I said, are you living in Miami? He said, yeah. I said, you know, Miami's a challenging place to live. I said, you think you have trouble getting here to train on time? And after the conversation, which was 45 minutes, he left. He called me from the car and he said, I understand what you are asking me and I give you my word that I am fully committed. It was very interesting because I didn't want to say it, but I want him to understand that I don't have the ability to take on people. I, I absolutely don't have the ability to take on people who aren't committed. I just can't do it. And I can help you, but I can't do that for you. That's what you do. So, But you also have to understand that some, most of us don't know what commitment is before we meet you. Oh, well. And that's something that you taught me. I remember I've only been late to your class one time and I will never <laughs> forget it yeah. because that's how it was for yeah. me that I was like, I am never doing this ever again. Yeah. Also, the, the way that you put it out of it's, it's an effort for me to be here. It's an effort to have time to be here for you. It's an like everything that is around working with you. It's, it's a responsibility and, and you teach us in that way too. So I don't think, I, I think I kind of was committed before I met you, but now I'm like, I get 10 minutes early yeah. everywhere I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere yeah. I go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's life changing. No, it's life changing. Well, it's life changing. I, it's a, like I said before, it really is a joy to work with you and to see someone change. And, you know, I think you it's it's wonderful or, or it's very cool fun joyous working with someone who's up and coming but the beautiful part of that is they're not that when you meet them so if like if you meet someone I used to talk about this all the time in sports if I get a guy who's six foot four 250 pounds and he runs a four six 40 yard dash and he's super fast and athletic he walked in the door like that I didn't do anything you know, I can't say, you know, I helped that person. We talked about You know, maybe I helped them a little bit, but I can't make them superhuman and athletic. They're already like that. When you're a big part of the story or the process and the journey and you saw them go from what they were to a really amazing version of what they are today, that feels really good because you're a part of the fabric or intertwined in their story. And that's what's really cool because you, I'm... I'm interested in like the long-term commitment people and experience with people. Like I'm, you know, you can train. I, I've had women who want to train for their wedding for 30 days and <laughs> just absolutely crush their soul for 30 days. And they look amazing and they're committed, but it's like, you know, that's it. Yeah, that, and then I never see them again. Exactly and, like you know, sometimes they have a, a, re, a bounce back, but, you know, it's it's to me it's, I think when you said you didn't know what commitment was, I think we all understand what commitment is. We just don't live it. Meaning like because it's intimidating and it's hard. It's hard. Like being committed is hard. Being like, committed is hard. Right? To your job. A routine. A yes. real healthy routine is hard and discipline is hard. But I I live by it now. Mm -hmm. I live by waking up early no matter what time I went to sleep, even though I really, really understand the responsibility of going to sleep early now as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I have to work till late, I still wake up early. Um, I get my morning breathing now more than ever. I start my day. I go work out. I eat healthy. I am focused. I am staying active and moving my body and, and, and feeling alive. And I take whatever I do here to my passion and my work mm -hmm. that I live by as well mm -hmm. and I have all my life. But now it's more productive. Now mm -hmm. I am building something mm -hmm. stronger. Mm -hmm. So I, people should really see this more because also the contrast is I am the only one living this life around the people that I work with. Oh, really? Yes. I'm, sh I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised. Honestly, me too, because the world is really changing. It's mm -hmm. already changed. Right. I know there's a couple, but right now I am, and I will tell you in my exact present, 
from yesterday till Sunday, I'm, I am in a songwriting camp. And what's I a song? What's a songwriting camp? Tell we write, everybody. We write songs for an artist. Okay. So we're writing an album for a very amazing artist that I love. That he's my friend now and supports me. But you see the unhealthiness through like a whole day. What type of unhealthy Pizza, thing? Okay. Burgers, chips, uh, cigarettes, weed, da da da, and. And you're like seeing that there and they're like, you become like, wow, that, I was that person. And look at the sloppiness of like what it, like, yeah, they're, they're incredibly talented, obviously, but imagine if they could, like, I'm here just like organizing everything, da, 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 let's get the intro, let's get the rules, let's get, let's get the chords, let's go, next, next, next. And they're trying to like, keep up with me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and, and we still get amazing job done because they're talented but imagine if we were all on the same yeah, right. like clean track right. we would be crushing oh yeah i'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure well i just don't understand like i mean i do understand but don't they understand that the better quality things they put in their body the more physically healthier their brain power clarity focus in paying attention whatever it is like they would be better versions of what they're doing and they're already super talented they're already super talented so. but if and you know and they're all like super overweight they can barely move mm -hmm. dude it's just that i'm sorry i i was like that too it has nothing to do with your physical and uh, and it does it does not have anything to do with um, if you're fat is a problem, if you're skinny is okay. No, no, no. Because you can be definitely skinny and mm. still be unhealthy. Oh, yeah. It's oh, just yeah. being healthy, period. Mm -hmm. And and I, I wish, and I know I will because my friends are now seeing the way I'm changing. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, oh, wow. Like, wait, what? Um, I know I'm going to be able to then be like, guys, please. Yeah. Let's, I want to bring you to my world, because um, it's definitely not a hundred percent there. Right. How do, what do you, what what advice can you pass on to listeners or anyone who's you know probably in a, a place? The challenging part is if you're in that space or you're in that you're living that type of life. It's challenging. You don't see it. You don't see where you are. Well, if someone wants to make the switch or they're having, if they do see it, they want to make the switch and they want. Some advice. What advice would you give them? What what helped you? <laughs> Start. Yeah. Start. Because if you're like me, that you're thinking on the long run, and then you're like, you want, you you are hungry for that success, da, 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 but then you start planning too much, you just have to go and do it. Yeah, it's not going to be go perfect. You just get something in, do it right. One day at a freaking time. Mm -hmm. Go and do it. Go, But do it. Because mm -hmm. then if you're planning and planning and planning and you're yeah. only doing yeah. it, it's like, what's happening? You know? I have a friend that he's always meal prep and meal prep and meal prep. And I, I'm like, but you haven't done anything. Like he's, he meal preps. And if he doesn't meal prep, he doesn't train. I'm like, dude, you, exactly. it's like, you got to just do your best whatever that looks like like get out there and do something and today yeah. i have to be honest and i am very open about it um it was the second day of my period and i woke up swollen like i was in so much pain i was like of course i'm not going to be in my 100 percent of my workout but i'm just going to do as much as i can mm -hmm. honestly Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Not like, I'm right. going to do as much as I can. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, yeah. like, honestly, as much as I can. And I just feel so much better. Because mm -hmm. it's also a thing. It's also for your brain. Yeah. Your brain sees it when you push oh, through. Yeah. And that helps you, like, yes. with the rest of your day. Yes. If I wouldn't have worked out, my day would have been different. Yes. And I think that's what I can leave to people. No matter if you're point. an artist or if, da, 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 if you work out your day will be different. Right. That's powerful advice. I, I, as you said, Elena, it's not really about training. But people don't understand. Training, I understand programming is so important. What you do is important. Results are very important. 
It's the act of doing something that you are committed to and following through. Follow through on something. But if you build up a habit of making excuses and saying, no, no, but it, but you know, I just, I can't because of this, or you said it's your period, or you know, things aren't going well, or I got this, I had this late session. It will always be something. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out a way to get it in. And I don't, listen, rest is the most important thing in the world. Sleep is so important. I know that, but I'm not going to make an excuse and say, uh, I, you know, I can't wake up an hour earlier and do something. I'm going to wake up earlier and do something because my days are committed to anatomy and, and the team and the organization. And I got to do what I got to do. Everything. Yeah. Everything. And if, but if every day I have an opportunity to make an excuse. Exactly. Every day. And there's always one yeah. because oh, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah, for sure. But for sure. I can tell you I'm so happy. And then when that hour is done, you you just, it's a brain thing, man. Your brain is like, hmm, mm -hmm. you did it again. Look at you. Awesome. You know? You're crushing it. You're crushing so it. I'm happy, man. Thank so, you. thank you. I want to get into... We only have a few minutes left here. I want to ask you some questions to have the, yeah. everyone get to know you. They're like speed questions. If you can answer them, great. If you can't answer them, oh. we move on to the next one. Okay, great. So what is your favorite type of music? Your, not to write, but what was your favorite type of music maybe growing up? Reggae. Reggae, really. And I love Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Oh, yeah. I used to listen to him when cassettes were, really, were still around. Do you know his son was a superstar football player at the University of Miami? What? His name is Rohan Marley. He wore number two, and he was an All-American linebacker, which means he's the best in the country. Wow. Yeah, Bob I didn't Marley. Know that. Yeah. yeah. Imagine being Bob Marley's son <laughs> in Miami and being a star linebacker. Dude. Oh my God. <laughs> Talk about rock star. I mean, I want to be him for a day. Star. He walked into Anatomy about two months ago Shut to get an really? IV from Vita Squad. And they said, Rohan Marley was just here. And I said, what? I said, why didn't you tell me? I would have loved to met him. Because I watched him on TV. That's crazy. Uh, okay. Favorite, I always ask, favorite book? Do you have one? Oh, yeah. Um, there's one called 365 Days by Osho. Mm -hmm. It's not a storyline book, but it's mm -hmm. an everyday manifestation or... Got it. A daily like, reading. A daily reading. Yeah, I like that. Very good. I read it every Okay. Time. Favorite movie? You're going to hate this. Oh, boy. <laughs> Karate Kid? Karate Kid? No, what is it? What is it? Nacho Libre and oh. Sohan. Oh, man. Yeah, that is hilarious. everybody hates it, but that I That is it. hilarious. Comedy Sand movie. Sandler, yeah, Sandler's funny. Dude, you know, I'm going gonna, gonna to meet him in LA. Oh, I'm sure. Leaving next week. Oh, I'm sure. Have it plan out. Oh, I love I'm sure. him. Yeah. Adam, can't wait to meet yeah. him. Okay. <laughs> Favorite food? Uh, brownie and ice cream. Brownie and ice cream. Haven't had it in like three months. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's good. And it's going to stay that way for a little bit. It's going to stay that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a favorite actor? Uh, yeah. Adam Sandler. It's Adam Sandler? Oh, yeah. Good. Your favorite celebrity crush? Favorite celebrity crush. Please don't say Adam Sandler. <laughs> no, 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 you can be my dad. Stop oh, it. No. Cut that out. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> my favorite actor. Wow, that's. Um, I really, really like Will Smith. Will Smith, he's awesome. He's, I think he's really awesome. Another Anatomy member, by the way. Shut. Yeah. You're from. Are you kidding? Door. Yeah, he used to come in twice a day. Dude, first don't time. talk. To no, I'm serious. Me. He comes in. We had a kid that was a member that came, he said saw Will Smith. He said, "Oh my God, I'm going to go to my car and get my camera. I got to take a picture of Will Smith." I said, "If you go to your car and bring and back a camera, camera you will never it. come back in this facility again." <laughs> he said, "That's not fair." I'm like, "I don't care. It's that's the way it is." But he's Dude, super nice. Where super is nice. he? Yeah. <laughs> He he, tra he trains at one of our locations. I won't say which one. Of course. Yeah, but uh, he's uh, he's terrific. He's a very nice guy. And one thing about him is he tall? Yes, he's about an inch taller than me, and he remembers everyone's name. 
important. Everyone's name. I'm studying that. It was unbelievable. I don't know how he did it, but super nice, super friendly. Okay, do you have a favorite sports team? No, I don't think so. Next question. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite artist What's other than uh, other than Bob Marley? Growing up, you liked reggae, but now, do you have a favorite artist? Like, who's your favorite artist now? I have artists that inspire me a lot. I don't I think I can say favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I really respect what Post Malone is doing. Really? Okay. I like his sound, and I just like his personality. Yeah, he's no joke. And his story, yeah. too. Yeah. He got a serious story. Okay. Don't tattoo your face, though. Please. Oh, my goodness. No, please don't do that. If you could give one piece of advice to young people coming up, what would it be? On my life, to stay away from drugs. Really? That is not a joke at all. Like That's not a game. Drugs, I don't know why I've been seeing right now as something manageable Mm -hmm. or that you can... Like it's all good? Like it's all good. It's really not good at all. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're young, man. And, And I went through it. Um, you need to be focused. You need to be around people that will make you better. And mm-hmm. and it's not boring at all. They also, I don't know why people see it as boring to have a healthy lifestyle. It's not at all. If you want, because you deserve, feel that you deserve, please feel that you deserve a good life and the best of it and a peaceful life and mm-hmm. happiness because that's where you crash too mm-hmm. when you go through all of that. That's you know, good advice. That, that just That's find, good advice. Yeah. That's really good advice. That's what I recommend. Awesome. So what what can we see you? What projects are you working on now that you can mention? Can you mention them or not really? Yeah, I can mention them. Um yeah, I know. I actually, I don't know if I can. Okay. Yeah, don't do. I that. am working on my life here at Anatomy with Mark Mechna. Okay. It's one of my favorite projects. Oh yeah. The... We are best friends. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Even though I don't like football. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone where they can find you. I live in Hylia. Okay. In. The... Cut that out. Just kidding. I live in Ayalia and I love it. Very proud. Okay. Um, Elena Rose Oficial with just one F. Mm-hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, mm-hmm. Amazon Music. And you can find her um, at Anatomy. At Anatomy, at multiple locations. And we will yeah, not yeah. And, and she's also you can find her on a billboard on the causeway, <laughs> right? You can, I think, to like next. Two weeks, I think. The next two it's weeks? It's been there for like yeah. a month and a half now. It's so. a huge billboard of Elena on the causeway. It's very cool. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> and that's my girl. Oh, like, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Pilates, oh, yeah. guys. And she also does Pilates with me. I also do Pilates with my girl. <laughs> Tabletop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Megan's an amazing instructor, so she's we're very fortunate. She's instructor. a great person as well. She balances my female energy. She's awesome. Awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on. Thank you very, very Mark, much. Thank you I really for appreciate me. it. I love so, you with all my heart, bro. I oh, really do. And listen, I'm excited. You're a blessing. Thank you. No, man, I mean, you're a blessing you are, to this are, world. Are, I'm Walking trying. angel. I'm excited. I'm and from everyone that's listening, this is, I really recommend um, if you guys want to have a daily good vibe energy to really enjoy this I podcast because this makes you better, man, even though if you don't know it. Thank you. Thank you keep so it, much. Keep it. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for having me, Thank you. Me, man. Wish you all the best and even more success than you already have. So thank you.